see all the greenery on here. It is fantastic. Definitely worth the $20 or whatever it is. Don't be cheap like me. Just get these right from the start when you order your green stocks. Welcome back to Once Upon a Tiny Farm. My name's Drew. In today's video, I want to talk about my green stalks, which have been a game changer. One of my biggest successes in the garden has been everything that's growing in my green stalks. I have both the leaf and the original planters. However, there's one accessory that I didn't buy originally with my green stalk that I wish I did. And today I actually bought that accessory and I'm gonna install it for all of my green stalks. So I'll tell you what that is, that you sh one thing you shouldn't buy your green stalk without in this video. But before we get into that, I wanna talk about everything that I have growing in my green stalks, how I've been using them, and let's do that right now. I also wanna share some tips on setting these up. I've had some mistakes that I've made in places where I've put them, um, and I've actually had one fall over because of obviously a mistake. It wasn't level like I thought it was. So this green stalk here is a leaf. I have two of these leaf green stalks, and right now I have mostly basil in here. Um, I'm planning to plant some more herbs in here, uh, probably today uh, for the fall. Uh, I want to have more cilantro, parsley, dill, and these are great for things like that. They're a little bit, um, they're not as deep as the original planters, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but early this spring, I had lettuce in here, which did pretty good. Um, but I think this is better for herbs and also for strawberries, which I have in my other leaf. Now this leaf definitely didn't have all these weeds that it had earlier this spring, but this, we had so many awesome strawberries off of this one leaf that I think is 42 pockets. So 42 strawberries, one strawberry per pocket. We got pounds and pounds of strawberries. I might use both of my leaf planters next year for strawberries because we didn't seem to have enough strawberries. My son eats all of them as soon as they're ripe and uh, we just didn't have enough to uh, save some. <laughs> so the thing that I really liked about the leaf planters for strawberries is that they're not laying on the ground. So you have less spoilage or less pests eating them on the ground. And they come out a lot cleaner because there's not any dirt that's falling on them. They're just hanging off of here and you can just pick them really, really easy. And they did really well. The watering system is amazing on here. Really, really, really clever. And that was a problem I had in my Dollar Tree planters where I tried to plant strawberries. I did a video about that. I'll, I'll link those above. But they did not work well because the planters are a little bit smaller and it's hard to keep all of the pockets moist enough. And it's just not deep enough really for strawberries. This is perfect for strawberries. Although I think the strawberries would also do maybe even better in the original planters, which is a deeper pocket, and I'll show you those right now. So these are my two original planters here, and I think I like these the best. There's not as many pockets. I think these have 30 pockets each, and you can see what I use them for a lot of different things. Um, up top here I ha have okra, um, but I, my original idea was to just plant the whole thing with peppers. And I probably would have done that, but I had some issues germinating my pepper seeds earlier uh, this year. So I probably still have uh, at least 15 or 20 pepper plants in here. Um, and the peppers are doing really well. The okra is doing really well. I also have um, tomatoes growing on the side here. And they're actually on the bottom and it's come all the way up. Um, you could plant anything in here. So like I have a lot of in-ground garden space and sometimes I grow too many of a certain crop and when I have extra these are great I could just throw an extra tomato plant in the original planter I could throw an extra pepper plant in here I could throw okra in here um, I did Swiss chard earlier this year I did kale in these earlier this year I still have Swiss chard in here um, you could grow anything in here you could probably even do squash and pumpkins things like that um, and this has just been fantastic. And in my last video, I was talking about some garden failures with dealing with pests and weed pressure. But this green stalk is amazing because it's such a small square footage. We have these right in front of our house. It's so easy to just come out here and harvest things. 
and as long as you put the right soil in here with really good amendments and a lot of nutrients in there and it's a good soil that's good at holding on to moisture everything's going to thrive in here and everything has thrived and the majority of the soil in here is actually straight from our chickens so we didn't have to go far to get the soil and it's been doing great it's been doing fantastic so I highly recommend these green stalks for anyone that uh, maybe doesn't like to bend over so much when you're gardening. I don't think I, <laughs> I'm getting older now and I don't like to bend over so much for gardening too long. It's so easy to harvest things. It's easy to take care of. You just water it from the top uh, reservoir here and it filters down to every level. It's a really, really clever system. And uh, I think I'm going to have to get more of these <laughs> because we grew, you could grow so much food in just a few square feet here and that's amazing. So now I wanna get into the issues I've had with setting up my green stalks. Now, I don't know if you could tell in this video or not, but this green stalk is definitely crooked and it's leaning this way. It's definitely not level. Now, when I set this up, I tamped the ground to make it level and I made sure it was level at every uh, step that I added more of these um, layers of the green stalk. However, this is just right on the soil, right on the ground. And I don't recommend doing that because every time it rains, it kind of settles deeper into the ground and it might not settle very even. And this one is settling and tipping over this way and it's going to fall. And I've already had another one fall in a different spot. So what I recommend doing, if you're going to put them in the ground, like right on the soil, tamp down the soil and put something like a, like a landscape, like stone or something that's like a fat you know, piece of concrete that will be level and always stay level um, and put the green stock on top of like a landscape, landscape stone like that. I think that would work. Um, but what I'm actually going to be doing today is I'm going to be moving these over on our porch, which is cement. Um, and I'm going to be using the ultimate, that's not the ultimate, I'm going to be putting them on a spinner base. And that's another issue that I've had with these green stalks is that when you just set them on the ground without anything that can spin to rotate it you really only get sun on about three quarters of it and then the back side doesn't get exposed to the sun and things just don't grow well on a quarter of the green stalk and that is a problem so my strawberries over here probably would have been more prolific had I had the spinner base which I'm going to install um, and show you in a second um, because you will be able to come out at different times of the day and maybe spin it a little bit so that you can every couple hours each part of the uh, green stalk is getting even amount of sun and that's really really important and it's also important I think to have these green stalks set up on a flat surface I think these would do best being installed on some kind of concrete if you have some concrete in front of your house um, that's already flat and level you don't have to worry about them tilting in the soil if you set it up on the soil it's really really hard and you're just it's just a matter of time before it settles and tips over I've already had that happen luckily these green stalks are built so good that they don't break I've had them fall like twice now and none of the plastic has is really thick um, it hasn't broken um, so that's really good to know but now we're gonna I'm gonna show you the spinner base that is sold by green stock and you should definitely buy this First, don't be cheap like me and not buy it. Think you're saving yourself some money because you're going to end up being a lot happier if you just have it. Your plants are going to be happier. You're going to grow more food. And um, yeah, it's just going to make your life better. So let's go set these up. So here are the spinner bases here. See, these are pretty cool. They fit. They're designed to perfectly fit the, uh, the green stalk, um, levels of the green stalk. And it comes with a little tube here for, and there's drainage holes in here. So water will come in here. It won't get stuck in here. It'll drain out through this little plastic tube. So that's nice because I also actually have um, garden space out front here that I could actually have that water go all the way through all the layers of the green stalk and then out here in the front where I have more um, flowers and stuff growing. So that's kind of neat. But you'll also be able to easily spin the tower around so that everything will grow really evenly so maybe um, something I could do once or twice a day in the morning when I 
come to water them I could just spin it a little bit and then maybe at night when I water it again spin it a little bit more and um, I'll have to figure that out but it's nice to have that ability to do that so I think that this is just the plain spinner base they also spell, sell a spinner base that has wheels on it so you could wheel these around really easy but I didn't feel like that was necessary because I'm just going to keep these in the spot that they're at. They're really heavy, so it would be nice if you needed to move them to be able to wheel them around, but they're just going to stay in the spot that they're at. So right now I'm going to set this up. I'm going to put one of these on here and see how it goes on. Let's see how this works. Oh, that's pretty easy. Cool. Yeah, there's some little grooves in here, but I don't think it really sets in. It, you could just put it on here, and it looks like it's it's on pretty good. So that's good. These are super heavy at this point, and it would be a lot easier to do this before you have plants in here, because the last thing you want to do is squish your plants when they're already pretty well established. So you got to be really careful doing this. But it's nice to be able to spin it and make sure each little hook is connected here. And that's what happens. You lose a little banana pepper. That's okay. It would be easier, it would have been easier to set this up like this before we planted everything, but it is what it is. I think these things will do really well here. And it looks like we got them all in correct. So I'm going to keep piling them up. Really trying not to kill anything as I do this. It sounds like it might thunderstorm, so I might have to cut this video short after I get this first one in. But all you got to do is make sure you have your little watering discs in each layer, except for the top one, which I'm about to do, which has the top reservoir. Go. Just don't want to squish anything, but look at that spinny action. I love that. That's not it. Wow. I have a tomato here that's probably going to snap. I need to wrap something around here to trellis this up so that I already had that happen to my other green stalk. I had a really long tomato. It was just about, it was just starting to form some nice heirloom tomatoes, but man, that's a really, really healthy looking tomato. Grows really well in the chicken compost too. All right, one more level and we'll have one and then I think I'm going to stop for now. There's the top layering bowl. I'm putting these, this okra here is really tall and I'm going to put that on the top so it doesn't shade anything growing down below it. This in. This one's really heavy. Hopefully, don't kill anything here. Oh my gosh. There we go. The weight kind of helps it settle in to the spot it's supposed to be. Just want to check and make sure each there's a little groove where it intersects these pockets. And it looks like it's in there just right. Look at that. That's awesome. I really should have got these from the beginning because these are outstanding. It looks really nice and really easy to move it around so we'll get some even growth all the way around this green stalk. You can see all the greenery on here. Isn't this fantastic? Definitely worth the $20 or whatever it is. Don't be cheap like me. Just get these right from the start when you order your green stalks. I gotta do something to trellis this tomato up. All right guys, it's starting to rain. I'm gonna wrap this video up. Thank you all for watching. Um, I have a link below down for green stalks if you wanna purchase one yourself. Feel free to use my link. It helps out our channel in a tiny, tiny way. I'd really appreciate that. 
These green stalks are awesome. Definitely, if you get one, get this spinner base like I did. Um, I think they're going to be a game changer. And you can just tell how well everything is growing in here. Just think of all the possibilities of things you can grow in just, what, I think it's like 12 square feet. So definitely check these out. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.